What's going on guys, Austin Zay back here with another YouTube video and today we're gonna be talking about the housing market crash, okay? What is actually about to happen in the housing market in 2022 and beyond? Now, we've all seen all the different headlines so I just wanted to make a short, concise video kind of breaking down everything going on in the crazy world that we're living in and everything going on in the crazy housing market. Now, if you're brand new to my channel, again, my name is Austin and I'm actually a real estate agent. I run a real estate team and I actually also own an investment real estate company. So every single day we are in the real estate market. We're working with buyers, we're working with sellers, we're working with lenders. And we're also working with a lot of big money. We're working with a lot of Wall Street money and we're working with a lot of the big hedge funds. And we really pay attention to all of the different analytics and everything going on in the market. And let me tell you, the market is definitely shifting, okay? I will say that in the state of Arizona, where I currently live right now, a couple of months ago, okay, not very long ago at all, we had under 4 thousand listings on the market now to put this into perspective you know a healthy market is probably somewhere in the state of arizona around thirty thousand houses okay that would be probably a neutral market not a buyer's market not a seller's market but a very neutral market so four thousand houses was like a three week supply which is a red hot seller's market okay now Fast forward to today, we have just under 10,000 active listings. So we've almost tripled in total inventory in a matter of less than 60 days, okay? Pretty much like two months, we've gone almost triple in the inventory. Now it's been reported that mortgage rates just hit a record high since 2009. And nearly all of the housing markets throughout the entire country are basically having affordability issues. When you look at the affordability, you know, things are just not affordable like they used to be. With mortgage rates continuing to rise and the Federal Reserve coming and basically saying that they're just going to keep going up, you know, there's really one big question for any prospective home buyer, any potential home seller, and even investors throughout the country, what is going to happen at the end of the day? You know, what are we looking at? Are, are we preparing for, you know, another 2008 or what actually is going to happen? And there's a lot of different people that I've talked to that have different opinions. You know, I've talked to people that have said, hey, Austin, you know, it's just going to plateau, right? We're not going to continue to experience these crazy double digit gains when it comes to housing prices. And there's a lot of people that think we're in for a crash. And there's even some people that think that the market is just going to continue to go up, okay? Now, we're gonna break all that down. So if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you would take just a quick second and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you haven't already. So as we talked about a little while ago, mortgage rates are just continuing to go up, okay? In the last nine weeks, we've actually seen them spike or be raised roughly eight times, okay? Now, again, the Federal Reserve is you know planning to have multiple more meetings and they're going to continue to raise the rates. The 30-year fixed rate actually jumped by 17 basis points to up to 5.27%, okay? Now, if you're somebody watching the video and you bought a house, you know, earlier on in the year or even last year, then that is a really big difference. You know, when you look, I know a lot of people that got and locked in, you know, a 30-year rate under 3%, okay? So again, when we're looking at a 5.27% rate, you know, with the Federal Reserve basically saying that they're just gonna continue to raise them, you know, that is obviously a big difference, you know, especially for a lot of people out there. You look at the first time home buyer, you know, and they were looking at a $300,000 house, 400, 500, whatever that was, and they were expecting their payment to be whatever the payment was going to be. Well, now that same house, you know, you have a significantly higher payment, and, and again, that is what is playing into the affordability issue. CNBC News actually reported that if rates were to go up another 50 basis points or home prices another 5%, that affordability would actually be the worst ever on record. And we all know that home buyers are not buying the price of the home, they're buying the monthly payment, right? What can they actually afford, you know, based on their income and the job that they have, you know, what is the monthly rate that they can afford? You know, when you look at how home buyers actually get qualified to buy a home, 
you know, it, it's largely uh, what basically how they how they do it is actually debt to income ratio, right? And when you look at debt to income ratio, that is largely based on or pretty much 100% based on the monthly payment, right? And when rates are doing what they're doing, and you couple that with home prices going up or you know just where they're at in general, you have a massive affordability issue to the point where now where they can afford the monthly payment, the house that they would theoretically be able to buy doesn't actually exist on the market, right? Because inventory is so low, or at least it was so low, but now, like we talked about just a minute ago, inventory is starting to go up. So according to Black Knight, in reaction to less affordability, what we're actually seeing is consumers are suddenly turning to an ARM, which is an adjustable rate mortgage. Now, that obviously offers a lower interest rate, but the ARM share of rate locks from potential home buyers jumped from 2.5% in December to nearly 8% in March. And that's more than triple within a three month window. So in a lot of different markets throughout the country, we're actually already seeing the housing market kind of taper and cool off, right? We actually saw new home sales drop by about 8.6% in the month of March, okay? And again, as I told you, as an agent, as a realtor, as an investor, you know, in the state of Arizona, we're seeing days on market go up, we're seeing demand go down, we're seeing supply go way up. And again, what that will ultimately lead to in my opinion, is a drop or a decrease in the actual price of homes. At the end of the day, again, statistics are showing that the demand is just continuing to go down. When you really take a step back and you actually think about it, it actually makes a ton of sense, okay? Demand cannot keep going up with interest rates going up. There is a massive affordability issue and therefore demand automatically has to go down, okay? Now, if demand goes down and supply goes up, then you have to eventually have either a plateau, it depends on the market throughout the country, but you either have to have a plateau in the price of housing, you're not gonna see this crazy unrealistic appreciation anymore, or prices actually have to start to come down. Now I think largely a big factor really depends on the market that you're in, right? Take a state like Arizona, and we've got buyers coming here from California, we have people moving here, right? Now take maybe a state where it's a little bit less desirable, right? We're going to have to actually look at each individual market a little bit differently. Of course, we can look at the statistics you know, nationwide, right? And we can look at Housing Wire and CNBC and the Wall Street Journal, and we can look at all the different articles, but at the end of the day, it is my opinion that we have to take each market and look at it one by one. So depending on what market you live in, you know, you really have to take that market and you have to look and hone in on that particular market. So Daniel Hell, a chief economist for Realtor.com, actually said, uh, April data suggests a positive turn of events is on the horizon for weary buyers. If the trends we're seeing now hold true, we could potentially see year over year inventory growth within the next few weeks. Uh, you know, and again, I do believe that that is very, very accurate. Now, there are so many different things that we can obviously talk about here, and there's so many other people making videos on YouTube, and a lot of people writing articles and things of that nature, and you know, there's a lot of different variables that I'm not even talking about, right? Uh, there, you know, all the way from a housing shortage problem to, you know, the way that they're building apartment buildings to, you know, you name it, right? The hedge funds, you know, buying all up, the, you know, the basically the single family homes in all the neighborhoods, you know, the build to rent neighborhoods, single family. And, and we have a lot of variables and we can really look at every variable and then we can start to predict, you know, what is actually going to happen in the market. But I'll say this. Nobody has a crystal ball, number one, okay? There is nobody that can actually predict the future, number one. Number two, I think, again, every market throughout the country is different. And number three, if we look at the simple fact of the matter, right? If we don't look at any of that other data and we don't account for all those other variables, which we certainly can, what I think we do have to focus mainly on is simply supply and demand, right? You know, supply and demand, in my opinion, is one of the biggest reasons that we ended up here to begin with, right? You had a ton of demand due to the low interest rates. It was essentially 
free money. I mean, let's be real, right? The last couple of years was basically free money. You get under a 3% interest rate and it's like, well, why would I not buy a house? I mean, at the end of the day, if I have a decent credit score, you know, and I have enough money for a down payment, which you didn't need very much, then why would I not buy a house? It makes way more sense than actually going out and renting. And so therefore, you had everybody and their mom that wanted to buy. Now, on the flip side, sellers didn't really want to sell because the prices were going up so much. Everybody had equity. It was totally unlike 08. And a seller was like, well, why would I sell? Even if I want to sell, I have nowhere to buy, right? And so therefore, sellers weren't selling really as much as there was a demand, right? Which caused a record low supply, a record high demand, and it caused the appreciation to obviously go through the roof. So if we focus on the simple fact of the matter, if you reverse that entire scenario and you have more supply and less demand, it basically will cause prices to go down again. I would focus largely on the market that you're in. Ohio is going to look different than Arizona. Florida is going to look different than New York, right? North Dakota is going to look different than Las Vegas, okay? It really does depend on where you're at, you know? And, and I think there's a lot of migration patterns and things that we can look at and people moving from state to state. And that is obviously going to impact, you know, how hard I think that particular market will actually get hit, okay? Uh, again, that is just my opinion. I'd love to make more videos on it. Again, I, I try to look at this stuff every day and uh, I really try to stay up to date on everything. So definitely, if you wanna see more, if you want me to elaborate on anything, I'd be happy to drop in the comment section down below uh, what you know I might've missed or what other variables you'd like me to talk about and I'm happy to do just that. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you would smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe if you haven't already and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.